So this is something very interesting. So this doesn't have any gas. It just is electrically driven pump. It has a special lubricant. It has a wiper wire, which I'll show you how easy it is to manipulate. Then the console. So the console has uh, uh, some controls. This is the knob. You see seven figure written zero to seven. So it's, it covers a distance of seven centimeters. There are three knobs, one for low speed, one for high speed, and one with a prime button to control the pump. This is the guide wire brake and then there is a glide by pressing this key for a longer time you put it on his glide which is like what you see as a dyna glide on uh, rota so it's very similar but the mechanism of action is uh, totally different you can uh, see this uh, cartoon how this spins so this is the crown which is a diamond pack and it cuts in the forward fashion and then when it goes back it cuts on the backward fashion which is unlike rota which cuts on one side and then it does for the deeper cut it does what is called as sanding of the lesion so a lot of functions can be done so it advantage over rota that it can go on both directions anti-grit and retrograde can do deep calcium burn because it rotates around the calcium so it can give a deep cut now this is the wire so i will show you the wire is easy, easy to make a, a loop at the terminal part you can see that a needle doing that very easily and uh, is a nitinol wire <coughs> retains its shape and see this heavy calcium lesion and a very tortuous vessel the way it goes down this vessel deep down and this is no different from a routine BMW or a workhouse wire. There is hardly any difference. And I find it very comfortable to use this as a primary wire rather than to exchange like what we have to do for Rota. One important difference to remember against Rota is the speed at which you have to run. It is at very slow speed. So you have to be patient. You don't have to be jumpy in pushing the knob. One millimeter per second is what is recommended. You give a 25 second ablation then stop for another 20 seconds and then go back so in that 25 seconds you go forward in the lesion come back to where you started and then go forwards so this is the way it starts so it has to be very gradual very patient cutting it has a, a dual mechanism of action atherectomy when it spins forwards and calcium modification with the high pulsatile forces that it goes into the deeper part of the vessel to create those cuts which we have been talking of when is the calcium enough to warrant etherectomy? So there have been some elegant algorithms and some criticism of these algorithms. One of these was published in 2021, where they looked at um, angiographic calcification on IWAS, calcium arc more than 270. Uh, then uh, if the arc is more than 270, you measure the length. If the arc is 360, you give one extra point. Presence of a calcific nodule gives one extra point. Vessel diameter less than 3.5 gives you one point. So if you have four um, points, you would prefer to do etherectomy. So this is what the algorithm was mentioned in 2021. This is from Ziad's lab uh, of uh, OCT guided. There is a rule of five, 0.5 thickness or more, more than 50% of the vessel arc and lesion length more than five millimeter. So if the points are high, three to four, you probably can think of going to etherectomy. So one answer is very clear. If there's an uncrossable lesion, you have to do an etherectomy, which could be rota or orbital. Uh, then rest of them is something which we keep changing. And I think it's a very operator dependent. Some relative contraindications, graft, single living vessel. We can do it on impella. We have done it in one case. Already implanted stent, going through a stent with a rota, with orbital is not desirable. Thrombus or a dissection. So if we compare rota versus... Uh, Orbital etherectomy, some advantages of uh, orbital etherectomy is the wire, very nice wire. Incidence of slow flow is very, very, variations have been reported to be less. Calcified nodule, since it orbits the 360 degree, is an excellent indication for uh, orbital etherectomy, much more than rota. The second very important indication, which Dr. Pratap Kumar was mentioning, osteal lesions, very interesting. So if you have an osteal RCA, osteal cirque, Go forward slowly. Don't cut. Go with the glide down and cut when you go back. So the risk of perforation is less. And you're cutting on the retrograde direction. You're not cutting in the anti-grade direction. So the osteum is always uh, ablated. In a rota, you may miss that osteum. It is always ablated because you can pull back the guiding while you go with the glide down the lesion and come back and cut it on with etherectomy. So it's a very good indication. So deep calcium also... Uh, rota doesn't do much to a deep calcium because of the spin that happens, it cuts this. What is the scientific evidence supporting? This was the trial, Orbit Trial 2, 
which actually based on which the uh, device got an FDA clearance. It has a three year follow up and you can look up the MACE rates. Uh, pretty good for the type of lesions and diabetic patients, pretty good. F uh, persistent or slow flow is the least. So this you can see. And perforation majority happened post balloon or stent. So sizing this balloon after the lesion is done is very important. Look at the MACE. It three years was 23.5, which for these lesions is not bad at all. And majority of the MACE was actually MI, which was defined as three times rise in CK uh, in the first 48 hours. So this obviously would contribute to large majority of the MACE. You can see this is the first 30 days. So maximum MI is happened in 11.2. So if you subtract this from 23, it's a very low incidence of complications. The trial which will be very interesting will be Eclipse trial, which will be comparing orbital against conventional strategies, which could be uh, whatever patient, uh, whatever operator may try to use, like IVL, cutting balloon, um, specifically not mentioned in this trial. So let's look at this patient, heavy calcium in the right coronary artery. Uh, couldn't get a BMW wire with a, with a, you can see a BMW coming down with a micro catheter down. I couldn't get this wire down. Switched to a, a Gaia first. So this is a Gaia first wire, which crossed but the micro catheter did not cross. So how to get the wiper wire in? So it wasn't difficult. You just wedge the micro catheter and the wiper went in. See this wiper has gone in. Once it goes in, this is the orbital atherectomy which is coming down. So which is coming down and you can see we go down and cut the whole lesion with this orbital atherectomy. A one long stent, post dilated. This was all uh, OCT guided. And this is the final result. And similarly, this LED of the same patient you see heavy calcium, extremely heavy calcium. This is the wiper wire. It goes very easily through a calcific lesion. Again, an orbital atherectomy. Uh, NC balloon 3 followed by 3.5. This is 3.5 balloon, fully expanded, followed by a 3.5 stent. And this is the final result of this patient. So this was again OCT guided. In the interest of time, I've skipped those images. So reasonably good result, um, but it did help in this particular patient. Thank you very much.